What is up, everybody? Welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. We're going to be playing our normal Rocket League games today. With us this week, we have Eric. What's up? We have Tom. I am no longer Tom. Oh. Oh, oh no. God. I know, I know what this is. Oh, my God. It's the hoodie. I yep. am. She's Chicken. struggling with the zipper. Yeah, I got, I got, we're good. Oh, I am chicken ramen noodles. <laughs> For those listening, he has a, which by the way, is being messed up with the green screen. Yeah, I know. The, the color key. Um, <laughs> you should oh, definitely leave that on for the cast because uh, please stop oh, doing I that. Oh, I am. <laughs> it's happening. For, for those listening, we have a man in a uh, <laughs> Mario Chan ramen uh, package logo hoodie and... He is dancing in a way As. that I wish he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so he's Tom doing Tom things. Is Tom what is I doing really Tom things. Feel. Pretty much. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. The usual Tom things. So, uh, so yeah, now I've got the full ramen noodle appendage set. I'm, uh, I'm ready to do this. Let's go. <laughs> so was that actually sold by them? Or was that just like so some other not, party? Since it's not branded. It's not, yeah, it's not Maruchin. It's literally just ramen noodle soup chicken. Totally looks like Maruchin, but it's not. It is a completely generic ramen noodle hoodie. There I is, be happier. There is some degree of intellectual property being stolen there for sure. Shh, <laughs> it may not be branded, about it. but there are certain elements of that shirt that are immediately <laughs> recognizable and attributed to a certain brand of ramen noodle soup. So uh, I believe this is what the kids call extra. Uh, and I, I couldn't be happier, honestly. This is, it's fantastic. My only, my only issue with this is it's definitely thin. Like, it's not a hoodie I'm going to wear all winter, but in the fall, yeah, it works okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bit thin. Tom, what the fuck did you mean by the kids call extra? I'm completely lost. It's, it's extra. That's the aesthetic. It's like clearly over the top. It's, it's weird. It draws attention to the eye. It is not subtle or classy in any way. It is extra. Yes. Also known as eccentric. Yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of. Eccentric is too big of a word. Extra is the new word. Okay. Yeah. So no yeah. made. No made. So, how are y'all's week? Tom's week is extra busy. Fucking busy. Uh, the trend like, continues. Oh my this is, god! Uh, this is a thing that's happening every week. I I wish. I mean, this week was extra bad. Um, I literally I mean, had. Uh, like, this week was essential. The, wor the word of the day yeah. is extra. Yes. Brought to you by um, Extra Gum. <laughs> oh god thank you wrigley's for the sponsorship um i stole that that's fine anyway <laughs> um, <laughs> no like uh seriously aside from two rounds of phasmophobia last night is the first night this week i got to play any games whatsoever oh uh, it has just been busy as fuck lots that's of a... lots of work stuff that's unfortunate yeah, yeah it, it happens Although the, the good news is we're, we're slowly, slowly but surely, fingers crossed, knock on wood, getting into the, the slow season for, for my portion of, of work. So hopefully things will sell, slow down, settle down a little bit, and I can play more games. We'll be, we'll be back to our um, like extra cells being filled out in the, the show notes spreadsheet. Yes. <laughs> Tom's usual list of like 20 games to talk about every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, this this week i've got uh what five i think i like that awesome. which is about my normal yeah, i mean like I'm... i've got one so <laughs> i'm not gonna have a lot to talk about this week that's fine that's fine oh i had a first happen to me cooking i was kind of sad so i had a uh, vaxial uh, seal partially give in a sous vide. Oh, so no. a little bit of, no. so a little bit of water got in. Yeah, a little bit of water got in there. Um, now I could tell that not much got out, 
mm-hmm. because like there wasn't a big huge slick from all the garlic but there was definitely water in there still turned out okay but well, yeah there was know, definitely i'm glad it didn't completely right. sabotage your whole meal yeah you know what you do with those you just take out that steak and uh, decide to make milk steak with it. I was going to bring up milk no. steak. I was going to bring God. that up, and yeah. you did. That's fantastic. I, if, as long as the steak is wet and soggy, you might as well put it in some milk. So You can't judge it till you try it. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure so it's not good. Time, but <laughs> I will put milk in my vac seal bag instead of butter next time. Oh, my God. Okay. You should definitely do this. Yes, that's bad. I'm going I to do that with one of the cheap. Yeah, I do it with a sirloin for sure, like a flank steak. <laughs> yeah, it's something cheap. I'll do two of them: a control and then a god awful milk steak. <laughs> I'm into this. Okay, you've got to take a video though, so we can see this. Like of what it looks like. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, definitely document thing. some of it. Whole oh, the whole process. thing. You want me to babish this shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, I want nah, I want us to move like I really want 72 pin connector to finally like shit or get off the pot. We keep doing this thing where we have a food podcast that we happen to talk about video games on. We're like, no, no, really, we're a gaming group. Come on, guys, let's do this. Join the <laughs> Babbage Culinary Universe and say, fuck video games. We're going to talk food. Also, yeah, it's a trend around a lot of podcasts and stuff that I watch and listen to. I like the universe spin of finding people that fit your style and collectively bringing shows together from around that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know her name. I watched one of his with the, with the lady that's in there with him now. Sola. Yeah. yeah I really Sola's like, great. I really liked her. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a great personality. And, um, like my Dan Levitard show, they do some stuff like that. And same with like the meat eater show I watch. So, like, I'm really big on the idea of, like, building a universe around a central podcast kind of thing. Yeah. I actually, (laughs) I've thought about filming a short little, like, recipe video or something. I thought something like that would be fun. I mean, why not? You know what we could call that uh, that playlist on YouTube? We'd call it 72 PC Extra. God Mm. damn it, Tom. But no, we, I mean, hell, we could set up a connector. We could actually set up a channel on YouTube for 72 Food Connector if we wanted. Yeah. Interesting. Part of the 72 PC family. <laughs> if we wanted. You imply that we're not going to. Well, speaking, yeah. of, <laughs> sp- speaking of food, I made that thing I said I was going to make last week. Oh. Yeah, I made Fessenjun. It's a Persian dish. Um, How was it? It was pretty good. Uh, I sort of messed up. Not bad, but I think next time I will change a couple things. Um, but it's basically you just, it's like a chicken stew made with walnut and pomegranate, which is an interesting flavor combination. Um, so you basically, you just brown up some onions a little bit. Uh, you add turmeric and cinnamon. And th- my first mistake was accidentally adding way too much turmeric, which oh. I don't know if you've ever done that before. The whole thing is yellow. Well, that... That didn't matter too much, but like turmeric has kind of a, I don't want to say bitter, but it's not like a sweet spice. So a little goes yeah. a long way. It just gives it kind of like kind a of earthiness. Like, um, kind of like dill where it can overpower a dish if you're not careful. Yeah, sort of, sort of not. I don't know. So, but I did add like extra other ingredients to try to make up for it and it, it still turned out good. But, um, so yeah, you, you season that and you cook your chicken up in it. And then you toast up, you grind and toast up walnuts, like into, not not to like a butter, but it, it's a little stickier than like breadcrumbs, but you get it like really fine grind like that. And basically that okay. sort of thickens the stew. Oh, like so you're almost using it like a flour. Sort of, Ooh. yeah. Like there's a lot of walnut. So I used like, uh, like maybe one and a half onions. And then like a package of, I use chicken thighs, and then a whole like 12 ounce bag of walnuts. God up. damn. Easy. Like that's what, that's like the, that's the proportions. Um, would, uh, would you like some chicken with your walnuts? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you use that to like thicken it and you use water or chicken stock or whatever. And then you add pomegranate molasses, which is, it's like just pomegranate syrup basically, but it's not sweet. It's more tart. And then you add, if you want it sweet and sour, 
it adds like a soury tartness to the whole thing. So you you balance that out with some sweetness, with like honey or sugar or something. So it's it's mm. really cool. It's like it's this uh, the savory, sweet sour, chicken stew thing that you can eat with rice. It's pretty good. I'm gonna have to give that a shot. At first, I was wondering if you're actually gonna be cooking with pomegranate, like the actual like seedish, pitish, fruitish things. No, I'm I mean like, you can garnish with that, but yeah, it's, it's it was a really it was just one of those things where I haven't tasted anything like this before, which is cool. Like it was just a new, unique dish to try. All right. Okay. You you just said the G word. So when you're cooking for just you alone, do you garnish slash present the food in a nice way, or do you just throw the shit on the plate? Uh, depends on the day. Really depends on kinda, the day. Yeah. And sometimes the uh, like if I do a garnish, it'll be something where it's enough to actually taste it in it, like not just a hundred percent for looks. Like um, what did I make last week? I made or the week before last, I made shakshuka, which has uh. I think it was cilantro I put in it. So I put some in while it's cooking, and then I put some in at the end because it takes on a different flavor when you cook the herbs, and then you also have the fresh herbs too. Yeah. So that I did that, but I wouldn't just like the single mint leaf garnish thing. <laughs> like I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I, like I'm, I'm not drawing I'm designs and sauce on the plate or whatever. I'm not like that, but like I'll make it look good. Like the way I dress it up and put stuff like I'll put down my bed of rice. I'll lay the slices of chicken on top of each other to yeah. where one's sitting on top of the other, drape mm -hmm. some gravy over it. Like I'll do that kind of stuff. I don't know why. I just like doing that kind of stuff. It just feels nice. Cook it. Yeah. It's like a, I totally get it. treating yourself I mean, to something the, nice. Like uh, what's what's the common saying? You eat it first with your eyes. Like if the food doesn't yeah. look good, you're not going to be excited to eat it. But if that food looks fucking delicious... Hell yeah, you're into it. Like, well, I mean, before you pick up a fork, you're into it. There's actually been studies. The way food looks, like you physiologically taste things differently depending on how they look. Like that's oh, a really? very valid point of yeah. food and taste. Like taste is, like obviously it's the taste buds on your tongue, but it's also mostly smell. And it actually is sight and, and feel and everything. Like all of your senses contribute to how you perceive taste. It's not just an objective this is how this thing tastes. Hmm. I've never heard that about I knew about the whole smell ordeal, but huh, yeah. that's interesting. There. Yeah, there's a, a definitely a psychological aspect to to food and, and flavors and stuff, which is cool. I find that kind oh, of stuff cool. interesting. Human brains yeah. are weird. <laughs> Comrade that Bunny got... calls out Thanksgiving casserole never looks good, but it's one of the better things she makes. Uh, yeah, like Thanksgiving casserole never looks good, ever. It's literally an amalgamation of weird brown foods. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that shit is fucking delicious. I Wait, think what, it looks good if you understand what's in Thanksgiving casserole. All right, so Thanksgiving casserole is where you take all your fucking leftovers, like your turkey, your mashed potatoes, your green bean casserole, your corn, mashed potatoes, gravy, biscuits, whatever and you mash it all together. Like, I make sandwiches out of this stuff, like pile mashed potatoes, gravy, turkey bits, corn into a biscuit or a dinner roll and eat that shit. It's amazing. So you had me with most of what you were going with until you add a green bean casserole into the mix. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good. I like it there. I understand if normal people don't like it there. I like it. I don't, I don't dislike green bean casserole per se, but like if you're doing something with like corn and green beans and mashed potatoes and turkey, like or that's good. Thinking, don't, don't fuck it up by throwing in like a half-ass casserole. Okay, so <laughs> comrade buddy calls out peas, carrot, shredded turkey, gravy covered with stuffing and baked. Oh, that one. I thought you meant like the Thanksgiving sandwiches. Okay. Yeah, Either that that way, sounds both are. That great. sounds good. You see, I would say cover it with mashed potatoes and then like sprinkle on some stuffing. I don't know. I like my mashed potatoes. I I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Thanksgiving food is always just 10 out of 10. <sighs> A great cooked ham is excellent. A great cooked turkey is excellent. However, they're often not cooked that well. 
Yes. Very true. Yes, I'll give you that. I've had a lot of dried out turkeys in my day. Especially the white meat. I don't, I like Thanksgiving food, but it is not in my top top meals of the of anything, I guess. Like it's fine, but I enjoy the getting together with family more than I enjoy the actual meal itself. Yes. I concur. I'm going to emphatically disagree. I tolerate. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I barely tolerate seeing my family, but the food is what I'm there for. <laughs> okay. You just finished your meal. You know, you're nice and full. You left room for one piece of pie. Pumpkin. Slay and or cake. What is it? Pumpkin. Peanut butter pie. Or now nah, I'm going to say apple pie. I, I think I'd have to go with peanut butter myself. So, um, pumpkin, no contest. I, yeah. Chewy gets it. So have I told you guys about like the, like jaw dropping moment Gina laid on me the other night What? where she had never had pumpkin pie. Oh, really? Nice. Wow. Did she, has she tried it yet? Yeah. We got a store bought in one that was a little too, uh, spicy. Oh. Like even like tasting, I'm like, yeah, this isn't a great pie to set a standard off of. Too many spices, not spicy. Yeah, it's like hot, obviously, but like not for Maggie. people listening, if you've never had pumpkin pie, it's not spicy. It's <laughs> it's got <laughs> spice. Spicy it's pumpkins. it's spiced. It is not spicy. Yeah, when I said like it was, it was a, it was over cinnamon spicy nutmeg, in cinnamon the nutmeg, like, all spice, clove. Yes, too many of those. Clove and nutmeg were very, very prevalent in this pie. Yeah. Like, I like me some nutmeg, but... Yeah, I'm not big like, on I the super it. heavily spiced pies like that. Did you like it? No, not that much. But like I said, it wasn't a great one. I'm going right. to make it. Some... I don't put... really like pumpkin pie. There, I said it. I fucking said it. That's I admit fine. it. I don't really like pumpkin pie. That's fine. Did Did you at least use an unreasonable amount of whipped cream and or cool whip yeah yes to. sir okay. yes sir i even did the fat man special of after the pie was done you know what everyone does with the ready whip canister mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Why my do preferred you even have a ready whip canister if you're not eating straight from it my preferred <laughs> amount of whipped cream on a piece of pumpkin pie is is there a slice of pie under this <laughs> <laughs> if you can see the pie, it's not enough whipped cream. I emphatically agree. I, I can agree with that 100%. But no, I'm going to make one from scratch for her to get a better, um, like, this is what a good pumpkin pile tastes like. <laughs> Though the Chewy. crust was great. It was actually some of the best crust I've had. You should Chewy try calls on. that, uh, I'm sacrificing you to the ghost next time we play Phasmo. <laughs> yeah, I probably deserve that for not liking pumpkin pie. <laughs> Have you guys ever made I mean, pie it's... like from scratch or anything? Yes. No. Not pumpkin pie, but I've made mm. like peanut butter pie. Oh. I That's even not... made single bite peanut butter pies. I thought about trying to make a well, pecan pie. I heard that can get tricky because of the gelatin part. Like if you do it at the wrong temperature, the gelatin won't sit right and it'll just be goo. Do wow. you have to use gelatin? I thought I saw a I recipe that didn't have gelatin. Pecan pie. Really? You have one like no peck or anything like that in it? I thought so. I watched a video the other day, but I admit oh. I wasn't watching really closely, but I don't remember seeing gelatin. That said, I am not a pecan fine pie fan. I so. love me some I like pie. a good pecan pie, but I think most pecan pies that I've had are not good pecan pies. Like it's gotta be a, a really nice one because some of them they're so like I I don't like that jelly gooey filling part like if it was more pecans and less of that i'm, I'm all for it but when they when you like you cut a slice of it and then it like it doesn't hold its shape that's kind of gross to me yeah or or if you bite into it it's that like sickeningly sweet yeah somebody added yeah. way too much sugar exactly and that's a else. huge yeah. problem with pecan pies yeah. well i mean I, to me the started issue with it is i think pecans are an overrated nut Oh, I, I love pecans. Nah, pecans are the fucking best. Nah, they're kind of like halfway waxy. Like, nah, man. I had a maple not, not a bourbon fan. pecan pie one time. And oh. it was... Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, I might, I might be down for trying that. <laughs> I might be down for trying that. It was good. There's some maple in the mix. 
Maple yeah. makes uh, anything well, better. Maple is one of my favorite flavors of anything. Yeah. I still got to do that maple glazed uh, salmon you were advising me to try. I still haven't tried that yet. It's it's really, really worth it. <laughs> then again, I also didn't get any salmon this year. Sad face. I haven't but, had salmon anyway. in a good minute. Yeah, let's, not, let's stop talking about food. Yeah, I enjoy it. I could talk about food for probably longer than I could talk about video games. <laughs> 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 if we were like going on pure just volume of Food information cast. yeah but anyway so games um adam you want to lead off with yours and we can just yeah. kind of touch the news yeah. on it i've literally only played tarkov this whole week and i've been playing a lot of tarkov and i'm addicted to tarkov again <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. i've been cool. doing these it happened <laughs> i've been doing these what i call the sniper dad runs <laughs> so i don't even wear any armor or helmets I put on the like fake mustache um, face cover and then some aviator sunglasses and like a baseball <laughs> hat and a hunting rifle. And that's oh my it. God. <laughs> and it's like a Carhartt jacket he's wearing. Yeah. It's it's just like it looks like just some dad like he's about to go hunting with the boys. He's got this his big like cop mustache with aviator sunglasses and a hat. It's just, it's perfect. It's like Tarkov to the, cosplay. To the point, great. whenever Adam put that into the Tarkov chat, Scott's response was, I think I've hunted with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And it's fun. It's 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 a good time. I've gotten actually some some decent sniper shots. I'm getting a little better sniping in the game, which is cool. And it's been a really cool change of pace. And I have not a lot to lose if I die. Yeah, that's pretty uh, cheap gear runs. Yeah. Especially for you. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, I've been playing some uh, with Rob too, and we're just going like pretty much top tier ammo, really nice guns. Yeah. Thick boys, fat boys. We actually played some PMC reserve raids. Um, it, it's been fun. Do you got a Red Rebel? Yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, we actually, um... now we didn't kill everybody, but. We got a customs raid where everybody was dead except for us. Holy <laughs> shit. We had between us and like dog tags that we found on other bodies. Like everybody was accounted for. 15 players or whatever the max is. I think it's 15. Uh, we counted up all the dog tags and we were the only PMCs left. It was kind of weird. That's awesome. It was a cool feeling though. Yeah. Typically you only really like. I shouldn't say typically, but for like my tier player, I'd only time I'd think about something like that happening is on factory. Yeah. Yeah, I think I had uh, maybe two of the kill, two or three of the kills. Rob had like seven or something, and then, <laughs> and then a couple As of the he people. Does. Yeah. I've been saying this for weeks. He's a fucking killer. And then I think we found three, um, like three or so just on the bodies of the other people. So yeah, everything was accounted for. It was kind of neat. And we almost lost that it because cool. we thought we had everybody accounted for. And we're like, oh, cool. We're the last ones left. And I'm like uh, like healing up after our last fight and, and looking at some stuff. And all of a sudden, I just start getting shot in the back. And thank, <laughs> thank Tarkov Jesus that uh, the guy that was shooting at me just had like a, a submachine gun with not super high you know, armor-piercing bullets in it. So I, I was able to take some cover and Rob took him out and saved my life. And that was the last guy for sure. And we were, oh my God, it was so close. Nice. It was so close. I would have been so dead if he had a decent, like a better ammo and gun. Man, that would have been awful. Like, yeah, we wiped it. We wiped it. We went, what the fuck we just did happened? It. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> that being said, we still had to worry about, you know, if player scabs come in, you know, those aren't aren't limited or whatever with the player count. So that that was there was always still a threat. It's not like we could just run around the map, but it it was like oh, all the all the high geared players are gone. And we were heading That's to the cool. extract and we were just like, well, we don't have to extract. It, you know, it's the raid is a lot less risky than it used to be. So we like looped around the whole map again and like hit up the dorms area and some of the high areas just to make sure that we got everything we could out of it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Also, there was some there was some big news out of Tarkov this week. They had one of their dev um, dev chats. 
which for the record, uh, Battlestar Games, dude, they're they're a great dev house. They are super, super fucking like open with everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they had their dev talk. Um, they were talking about what they've been kind of hinting at. Um, expansion of woods. So, um, yeah, they're adding a new section to woods. And then in this section, there's actually going to be like an encampment, which is really cool looking. Like it's one of those things where you can probably defend it a little bit, but it's so large and there's so many different ways into it that even a full squad would have a hard time probably keeping it completely secured Mm because a few of the areas look like they had some foliage for people to sneak up onto it from. And it was really cool looking. So pretty excited to see that because that's a map that I think a lot of us do our challenges on and then never play it again. It's my least favorite map by far, but I'm actually excited for this. And he said he's making like the map itself is maybe twice as big as it was. Holy shit. Which is a huge expansion. So I'm I'm hoping there's enough uh like stuff in between all that that distance to to keep the map from being too just dead. And they also showed some of their uh, Streets of Tarkov concepts that they're doing. Well, Streets of Tarkov is going to be a new map, and it's going to be huge. Like they said, that it'll be hands down the largest player count on a map, and that he expects the first time they play tested, it'd be like at five frames a second. Um, <laughs> so, so um, they showed a building, and he was talking about how intricate this one building is. He's like, "There's going to be forty more of them in this map." Holy shit! Um, we'll see also, how that goes. I'm pretty apprehensive about that, to be honest. I, I am the game too. already like, doesn't did, run great. <laughs> well, he was calling out some of the things about like they can break it up into grids for the rendering process, and if it's yeah. behind a wall, don't render the next grid, kind of thing. Yeah. So he's talking about there's already optimizations they're looking at before they even finish it. That's good. I mean, uh, my my main issue is how do you even find somebody in a map that dense? Like, is you it add that feel many like players? A- that's why I said it's going to be hands down the biggest or the most player count. Yeah, this is this is going to be kind of nutty. And he alluded to some of the open world ideas they were discussing. Like from Streets of Tarkov, there'll be access to um, labs. So you'll actually be able to go from a map to Tarkov oh. run into a labs run. And then you can exit labs and like go to interchange out of labs and stuff like that. Jesus. Yeah, so I don't know what, if you knew this, Tom. But... Be um, to... So to all connecting the... all the places because that's super yeah. risky to not like just get the fuck out if you've got good gear it might just be i i don't know how they would do it and i don't even think they have it all planned out yet no they so, don't he was very so, open about that yeah. he said they're still playing around with yeah. it. yeah but um but yeah even as it stands like that's been made for a long time with that in mind because you can see other maps from other maps in the game yeah, like yeah. If I knew you're that. in interchange or if you're in uh, short line, you can see reserves dome up on the edge and and stuff like that. Yeah. Like they all do connect, it, and I think and that like was custom the plan. extracts, like road to road or a fact or railroad to factory, uh, streets to tar- like road to Tarkov, all that kind of stuff. They mm-hmm. named it even in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so it'd, th- it'd be cool to see what happens. But I know they and said I, that he's hoping to have like the initial release of the game done. In like a year or so. Next year sounds like it'll be a gigantic year for them. If Mm -hmm. they can. Like with uh, Corona and all that. It makes things more difficult. So hopefully they can keep things going. Because they're. They've just been a great dev house to have a game from. It's just nice to see the complete. Like what do you guys think? How should we adjust this? Like that Mm -hmm. dev podcast. Had four streamers pretty much acting like the voice of the community. Asking questions giving feedback live straight to the devs. That is mm-hmm. so fucking cool. That yeah. is so fucking cool. And a lot of the other content creators too, like they'll text literally the CEO or whoever the, <laughs> and, and talk about the game and ask things and, and tell them also what the issues th- are and things like that. To the point where Pesley was texting actually one of the guys on the podcast during the podcast saying, ask this question for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is great. So yeah, this I'm really excited. Even though I haven't been playing, I played a little bit. I haven't been playing as much, but it's still a game I really enjoy to get into, and I love to see them keep going with it the way they are. Mm-hmm. And one more thing is 
he talked of a great rebalancing yeah that he intends on rebalancing or they intend on rebalancing everything so that'll be interesting to see and they just um they just started or in the process of starting a test server so they can actually so you can apply for that now through the launcher or whatever and they're actually going to be testing stuff there without having to affect the normal build of the game and like right now the way they do things is yeah and, and they really need it so right now the way they do things is every so often there will be a wipe of everybody's progress everybody starts at zero and the main reason for that was that they needed to test like the early game economy how stuff shakes out to the late game and everything so you'd get everybody's progress would be reset every you know four to seven or eight months or whatever the longest one was and with the test server they're not gonna have to do that as often because they can just say hey you know here's some new items we're just gonna give you some money you know to these accounts and these guys can test these things without having to you know put something in the game that could be broken and then everybody has to deal with it because even though tarkov is definitely a beta and it's always been shown as hey this is all this is all a test. Like the game is a test server. I think because yeah, of its yeah. popularity and its uh, you know the exploding player base from the last, you know, year and a half or whatever, people treat it like it's just a full game that's already done. So hopefully that uh, and Go ahead. To that, um he talked about player population. So mm-hmm. barring the spikes of like when um patches and stuff come out and big updates they're sitting at about a hundred thousand consistent player population. That's huge. That's a big number for constant players. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> so that, I was really impressed with that, but also last bit I want to talk about that. He brought up super nerd moment. That is awesome. They broke out a diagram of a pistol, like how it worked internally with springs and everything. It's like, we mismodeled this. It wasn't acting properly. We're reworking this gun to be more realistic. Based off the actual schematics of the fucking gun. (laughs) God damn. They, okay, so the one thing that, that I realized in Tarkov, like I, I played a whole lot of, um, hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades in VR, which is, it's literally just a VR gun range where you can use fucking anything. I thought that game had a love of guns with all the attachments and how things work and the realism mode. Like I, it's no, no fucking contest like tarkov is the game that worships guns the absolute most that i have ever seen yeah um it's really something to be fucking marveled i shit just the attachment system alone like you take away them trying to balance and organize for realism and you just look at the attachments it's still head and shoulders above anything else out there in terms of gun modifications and and loadout Mm -hmm. oh absolutely the fact the that you can make ridiculous player. weapons in itself is yeah. cool. <laughs> like, you know, most games. Okay, you can, yeah, you can you can change the the muzzle device and the foregrip and the stock or whatever, but you know, you can actually make just stupid, ridiculous guns with adapters and mounts and stuff. Like I made this. Uh, it, it's like a hunting rifle sort of, and it's got. It's got like a riser attachment from the side that's like you know, two inches above the top of the gun. And then on that, I've got a scope mount that has like ring mounts for a big scope. And then on top of that, a small mount for like a little scope. (laughs) And then I've got a little scope on top of that. So the actual scope that you look through in the gun is like a foot and a half (laughs) over the barrel of the gun. It's stupid, but you can do it. Like those, those pieces fit together and you can make a dumb gun like that. I love how they do that. Like the flashlight stuff is still my favorite, but I like that you can put four grips, literally making a circle around some of those. You can put it's sights really in fun. front of sights that block the sights. <laughs> yes. I've ac- I've accidentally done that. Like that's something you can do on accident. But yeah, awesome. it's just really fucking cool to see them doing all that work. The, really the cool. one, I think the first time I realized that, like how in depth that system was, was looking at the the flea market for the first time because I got a sight, and you can rotate that thing and look through the sight and see what your crosshair will be, 
Like it's not like most most games will have like a view model where it's super high res when you're holding the thing and then an external game model where it's just laying around and it's low detail, right? And like those optics will never show up when you're just rotating that shit in a menu. Nah, fucking Tarkov is all about that realism and that commitment to detail. The guns look as good in the menus as they do when you're fucking holding them. It's incredible. Yeah, it's really, really fucking well done for that. And they were showing, like, um, man, I can never remember the guy's name. Nikita. The main front man. Nikita. Nikita. He was showing, like, he's like, yeah, I just went to the dev chat and just started grabbing screenshots. <laughs> so it was really, really cool to see some of their, like, uh, models for some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Sorry, my Alexa went off. <laughs> Alexa, order pizza. No, no, you can't say that in a podcast. <laughs> you're gonna order somebody a pizza. And you're then welcome. You have to give us a slice, and that shipping is just outrageous. Alexa, well, <laughs> yeah, Alexa, play "Never Gonna Give You Up" by Rick Astley. Damn it! Never gonna give you up. Sorry. Um. Yeah. It's for the people so listening in their car on the way to work. You've got a yeah. uh, new game on your list. I do have a new game on my list, and that is courtesy of Dobby. Um, so him and I were, were talking about roguelikes. Um, I guess we should have put something in here about uh, the Game Awards and them announcing their nominees. Anyway, Hades is one of the nominees for Game of the Year for the Game Awards. And Dobby said something like, damn, Tom was actually correct for once. What the fuck is this? So he bought Hades uh, because as anybody should, when I recommend a game, you should be like, mm, is he recommended a walking simulator? Is this a good game? Um <laughs> So Man, Tom, you're going to piss this, Adam off. Is this a Tom Jeez. game or is this a game that other people like? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, Dobby picked up Hades. He's fallen in love with it. And I said, yeah, it's the first roguelite that I've seen that actually has an emphasis on narrative and story. And he said, oh, have you never played Children of Morta? And I said, no. It's been on my list for a while and I've watched one trailer, but I've been playing other stuff. So motherfucker gifts it to me. Um, so yeah, I've been playing that for a couple days, or a couple days. I've been playing that since like 10 p.m. last night, and it is excellent. Um, I cannot believe I haven't owned this game yet because it is got it has got the very best pixel art I have ever seen, bar none. Uh, it's goddamn gorgeous. Um, like imagine Hyper Light Drifter but with a, uh, a commitment to even more detail. Uh, it just looks glorious. Um, so it basically plays kind of like Diablo. There are randomly generated maps. You have a lot of different family members with e each of them have their own different weapons and uh, you know pros and cons to them. And you just run through doing Diablo-esque things while getting currency and other things that would uh, help you progress and upgrade your characters as time goes on. They've got skill trees, they've got um, a bunch of different upgrades, and it's a lot of fun. Um, the story center is around one family, so as you progress, you learn a little bit more about like the dad and the, the eldest daughter and grandma, and uh, you can find other people and shopkeepers and even pets out in the wild. It's like I literally just rescued a wolf cub um, and now there are missions related to the people that I've rescued to, you know, get them better or improve their abilities. And it'll unlock things that are outside the game in your house. Like after one run, I got the ability to uh, upgrade weapons and armor. So now I can spend my gold on those things instead of, you know, whatever else inside of a dungeon. Um, okay. The wolf, I now apparently have a quest to go get some medicine to fix up this poor puppy. Um really really cool stuff and the narrative it's all voice acted like when uh there's a a full narrator like both in the game and outside of it um neat little cutscenes. like it's it's got a full fucking story attached to it which is really neat um so i uh apparently hades did not do this first at all um and i just totally missed this one so thank you again dobby uh and i'm I'm loving this thing. It's really good. Oh, and and I believe it's got couch co-op. So yeah, do you want to play oh. a Diablo-esque something sitting on the couch? You you can. 
So yeah, I might uh, I might have to goad Comrade Bunny into playing that with me. <laughs> so uh, you say you have siblings and stuff like that in the game that you can play mm -hmm. as as well. Is it always like diff is it uh, Rogue Legacy esque where they always have different stuff each time you get into a no. dungeon? No, no, they are their own distinct characters with their own distinct wants, needs, and weaponry. Um, and skill trees. So just because you upgrade one guy, like I had never upgraded the uh, the daughter. I was just playing as the dad the whole time. Uh, so when I played as the daughter, I was I felt criminally underleveled. But as you level up people so much, they unlock family perks. So it incentivizes you to play as every single person and level them up because once you level them up to a certain extent, they help out the entire family. So right now, okay. the entire family can walk a little bit faster or swing a little bit faster uh, because I, I leveled up the eldest daughter somewhat. It is really fucking cool. Um, so it's it's not as heavy handed as Hades where it will say right out front, hey, use the bow and arrow and we'll give you 20% more of this in-game currency. Instead, they just let you figure that out on your own. So it feels a little less heavy handed. Um but it accomplishes the same goal. Uh, so far, I don't have like a real verdict about the game. I've put probably an hour or two into it, um, but I like what I see so far. Glad you're liking it. Yeah. So Diablo-esque roguelike. It's called Children of Morta. Uh, go check it out. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot about it. I've just never played it. So it's good to hear that you're getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, what about you, Eric? Have you played anything this week? Dota, more Dota. Nothing I'm new. So nothing sorry. to get into. I'm but two, two, two awesome notes. Uh, first is so we have a five man guild with a max of fifty, and we are like sixty percentile in all of Dota somehow with five players. Fifty nine. We're now fifty nine. Well, we're about to be higher. Uh, Scott and I keep playing a fuck ton, so. Uh, we're, we're keeping this guild rolling, baby. Nice. Um, and secondly, might have been the largest win streak I've ever had in Dota. Like for normal games, a four-game win streak. I was pretty excited. I, I yeah, will right. say, we it was the epitome of Dota last night. So we had possibly one of the best games I have ever played in Dota 2 where we were back and forth, we were guaranteed to lose. And then we're like, oh shit, we're on a hot streak now. Oh fuck, we fucked up that fight. Now we're totally gonna lose, except we didn't. And then they're knocking down our base and oh God, it's happening. And oh no, we fought them back. And now, now we're on the death march and we gotta do it now or else it's not gonna happen. And then we end up winning the game and it was just goddamn incredible. Followed by three more games of why on earth am I playing this? This is the worst game in the world. <laughs> well, the, the very one after what Tom talked about was an ass kicking. It was probably oh one of the worst God. ass kickings I've had in a while. It is. It was awful. But that one game, holy shit, that one game, it was close. It was a nail biter. Everyone was there. They were all good and doing their jobs. Like we weren't putting up with asshole teammates. It, it just fucking clicked and except it was a hard fought battle because everybody was really good and doing their jobs i i loved it i loved every minute of it it was such a close game but sounds yeah. like it sounds like um, one of the situations where the the high highs make up for the low lows where you just it's got the <laughs> i'm gonna say they even out even out those lows, man those <laughs> lows are low see they haven't been hitting me as low any as recently that I had that one game that was really bad. But other than that, like most of the games, even when we lose, it still feels like at some point we have a chance. Like the last game we played, win probability was always in the other team's favor. But we had the win probability coming back our way at about the 40-minute mark. And then we shit the bed and handed it back to him at the very end. Yeah. But yeah, um, I don't want to get too much into it. Just, yeah, I've been playing that. been really digging it. Um, bought a new game today. Ooh. It was on sale, been eyeing it a while. Um, yeah, go ahead and start laughing. Uh, The Hunter oh, no. Call of the Wild. Um, Adam, you watched me play it a little bit today. Um, yeah, it's a hunting game I haven't been able to get too deep into yet, but all I can tell so far, it's gonna inf 
have a lot of emphasis on like looking for tracks and shit. It's not going to be like the Cabela ones where you just run and gun. You get a dot on the animal, chase him down, shoot him. Um, and guns matter. Like I was trying to shoot a moose and didn't pay attention to my gun. My gun was undersized and the moose bled a little bit and I never found the moose. Hmm. So it's, it's going to have some realism in it, especially with the way that they're really skittish. So you have to be careful with your stocks and stuff. So I'm excited to try a little more of it. It's also multiplayer. And there's a few people around the Discord that have it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to try playing with some people. See how That's that cool. all works out. Yeah. And it's but, uh, something where like you kill a deer. You get points for killing that deer. You take those points, you can buy equipment so you can go hunting for bigger things and stuff like that. Or like you can get some calls so you can get more effective at killing those deer and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So think, it's got that natural progression. Yeah. I think hunting, like hunting games as a thing could definitely work like they're, they're not all just oh, automatically yeah. those crappy arcade games that you play at you know dave and busters or whatever as yeah. fun as those are those aren't at all representative of hunting at all so when a game I... comes through that's actually and i'm sure it's you know arcadey and unrealistic and stuff too but the fact that it, it it tries to actually replicate the experience of hunting into a game yeah. is, is cool and the cool thing is most hunting games, like it's deer, it's elk, it's water buffalo, it's rhinos, it's that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Like here, there's rabbits, there's coyotes, there's squirrels, like there's small animals as well, which is something I enjoy. Cool. Since like actually as me hunting, I spent more time hunting small things than big things. So I kind of personally appreciate that. Like man. Yeah, small things like man. Uh, the tasty uh, stuff. So... Does The Witcher 3 count as a hunting game? Because you take contracts I mean, and you run around. And... Game. Yeah. So it was Monster Well, in that case, <laughs> I was just going to say, like, I've actually been Jones in that recently. I really kind of want to play Hunter? some more Monster Hunter. Yeah. I'm in. I haven't played Monster Hunter in forever. It, it's a really fun game. The combat's really satisfying. It can get really repetitive, but it's super satisfying, at least. Mm-hmm. So you know, you know what you should hunt, Eric? What's that? The Colossi in Shadow of the Colossus. Oh my god, you should. What are you even doing? Why are we playing Rocket League? <laughs> so I don't know that sure Shadow that... of the Colossus is an ideal during cast game. <laughs> it no, kind of ruins our tagline of the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game because you cannot join the game. It is a single player game. Hey, hey, you can join the game if you try hard enough. <laughs> we could do like so a I, Twitch plays Shadow of the Colossus thing. Yes. Oh God, I don't trust Twitch with that. Um, I do have a copy of that upstairs, I believe. The oh, yeah. uh, PS3 remaster, because I believe it was also they did Eco and that at the same time. Mm -hmm. nice. So yeah, I have that upstairs. I'll, at some point, I might try it. Though I think if I'm going to redo it, I'm going to do the remake of it. It, it doesn't take very long to be honest like it's the not game a is real gonna... long game yeah you could probably knock that out in a week if you were dedicated a week what it's like a 40-hour game i think it's like 20 oh, i, I, got I that don't like think it's three 20. days no it's probably I, it's, it's a game where that. i mean it depends on how long it takes you to figure out the each yeah one. the new game plus mode there's literally... a puzzle aspect the, the new game plus mode literally gives you like secret weapons and items if you kill them all under a certain time limit. It's a it's a game designed to be replayed over and over again. All right. Huh. Talking about puzzles. We need a new witness. Yeah. Yeah. Is he working yeah. on a game? I mean, I'm I sure he's know. working on something. It's it's John Blow. He's he's not gonna not work on something. True. That, well, he, I may actually there was a game he was working on a long time ago. I don't remember what it was. I don't know if it's still happening. I have no idea. Great. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were. Uh, they did. Did they ever do that re-release of Braid? Uh, or the remaster. That was such a good game, but I still the witness was. The witness still has a very special place to me. Mm -hmm. Like it almost had a spiritual kind of feeling playing that game. 
like being on that island Eric, by that yourself. Is no, those are not words I expected you to say. That is a Tom no. line, sir. I am charging you a nickel. That game, but it's a very unique. That sounded feel like a non quantifiable statement, Eric. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, get what, I, get, I, I, game. I totally get what you're saying, though. It's, it's, it especially helped, too, that we all kind of got into it at the same time. Yeah. Yes. I remember we were all, like, screen sharing to each other playing that game, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do remember that. Well, the first time well, we it, played it, we are, we were playing in a group because one person was controlling the game and everybody else was trying to help figure out the puzzles. Which yeah. I think so. That was fun, cool. too. Yeah, it's a great. different way to play it. You don't get the, what I was hinting at, it like a spiritual feeling to it. When you yeah. play it alone, you absolutely get that. Yeah, yeah. when you play but it alone, group, it's, it's very much a zen mental exercise. Just, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. It's, but, it's a game where you can just vibe out to it. Is that a weird thing to say? Uh, no, because yes, yes and no, because you gotta you have to use a lot of your <laughs> you can't just relax. Like you can, maybe, but to do the you puzzles, just, you gotta like to you gotta rack your brain on those puzzles. But it's a chilling world just to run yeah. around in. Yeah, it is. Like it's finding gorgeous. recorders or solving environmental puzzles. Yeah. Or I don't want to say it, finding things that you can do. There's yeah. other things outside of what you think you can do. The things. The coolest moment. Do. One of the coolest moments in in my entire gaming. Yes. Experience. Yes. yes. Like that yes. was a psycho mantis like, to, moment <laughs> to uh, experience that again for the first time would be just amazing. Well, because I had actually stopped, and you're like, no, no. No, wait. You need to take a look at this. It's gonna blow your mind. I did that, and then my jaw just, like, fucking dropped. <laughs> Wait a minute. And then it just opens it up. Yep. Yes. And then you're looking at the entire game differently. Well, not yeah, necessarily the game, but the level. Like, and then... So, uh, uh, can I sort of spoil part of it? Yeah. I in, think I think at this point, just in, give, give, give once a Once you get it and, and know that there are things in the game that are in the game... You can literally start a new game and then roll credits within like five minutes because in the very first area you get to, if you were to know about the thing, you can do the thing and yeah. well, that's <laughs> it'll what, take you to the last portion of the game. It, it that's actually what blew my mind was mm -hmm. that at the end, that that part. The, the whole game world completely changes. And it's not like the game world physically changes. It's not like the game world becomes something different, but the way you view this game and the objects in it it's literally like having your eyes open for the first time mm -hmm. you have a completely, yeah a completely new way of viewing and taking in the world based on just this one segment of gameplay it's honestly one of the coolest things i have ever seen they're breaking in on that mechanic was brilliant how they did it yeah like being up there, seeing that, looking at that, and all of a sudden it clicks. You're like, <laughs> yeah. no way. You do no it, way. and you're like, holy shit. And the, the game doesn't, doesn't like normally tutorialize you, right? Like there's no fucking Ubisoft pop-up press F to do a thing. It's, it's all discovery based. And when you figure it out, like all great puzzle games... It doesn't feel frustrating. It makes you feel like a goddamn genius because you're like, holy shit, I figured this thing out and I made it do this thing and nobody told me how to do it. The game did tell you how to do it. It's really sneaky about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's called good. Uh, wasn't there, good wasn't there something where it, wasn't there something where that was um, some of the learning and this was uh, based around like language learning? Yeah. 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 You're but, literally being taught a new way to communicate. Mm hmm. Yeah, The Witness uh, yeah. is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. It's, yeah, that is always going to be one of mine. If you enjoy any kind of puzzle game and you've never played it, that is automatically the top of my list of things you need to try. Yeah, by far. Well, I, I have it on my phone, actually. If I, if I have to yeah. recommend one puzzle game to somebody, it would be probably Portal or Portal 2. I think those yeah. have a more wider appeal. I think it's different, though. It's I, I think a lot like, different. 
if you're dealing with someone who doesn't do first person shooters well they don't enjoy the pace of a first person shooter parts of portal can still be overwhelming like part this, the back two can be overwhelming i think well the, the back is, half of portal right. one has a pretty high it kind of ratchets up at the back half that's true. whenever the front half though yeah it's all chill take your time solve the problem the back think, half kind of ratchets it up if you haven't played portal 2 depending on how good you are at figuring out these puzzles it will either be a what two to three hour game or an eight to ten hour game probably eight to ten your first time and then two to three your second time eh, if you're good with shooter mechanics like my first run of portal was like two hours I remember because Scott left for class. I started the game. He got back from class. He watched me beat GLaDOS. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Was oh, that a spoiler? Oh. We have a raid from yeah. Relentless. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining. Oh, Thanks for the raid. Uh, we were just talking about um, the games we've been playing this week, and we got on a tangent about puzzle games, uh, specifically the game The Witness and then now Portal and Portal 2, which I, I, I love those games so much. So Ye speaking of Portal... Um, I, I so miss Valve single player games and I've been playing through Half-Life Alex again. Oh, uh, big surprise. <laughs> yeah, I know. How many is uh, this now? This is number four. Uh, but I actually have a reason to go through it again instead of just, oh my God, I need more Half-Life in my life. Um, so they enabled developer commentary, which they've done since Half-Life 2 episode one. So there are literally headphones around the world that you grab and you put them on. I made a save. I'm going to clip that from the podcast. That was <laughs> on me. Um, <laughs> I'm so fucking good at Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, there are headphones that you pick up and you put on your head. And the various developers at Valve will tell you about whatever thing you're doing or about to do or looking at. Um it's really cool. And I didn't realize how much goddamn effort went into this game. Like there are ways to make good games accident happens all the time. But when you're valve, it's basically a scientific fucking process of play testing and then watching people and figuring them out. Like, uh, I didn't know it, but apparently when they're originally play testing and zombies were approaching the player, players would get freaked out. They would, they would drop their clips and uh, they couldn't reload their gun. They were hitting the wrong buttons. Like it was, it was a mess. And they were, they were just a hot fucking mess because they were scared to death. Mm -hmm. um, and Valve said, "Ah, oh, shit, we really fucked up here. Should we just make reloading a single button affair? Like you just press a button to drop a clip, press a button to put a new one in. That's it. Like any other game. Until their players said that was one of their favorite parts is fucking up in that way." Because they didn't view it as a failure of the game. They viewed it as a failure of them because they were scared. And Half-Life, and especially VR, is all about immersion at all costs. So when they get scared and they fuck up reloading their gun and they're dropping mags all over their place and screaming the entire time, players loved it. They were <laughs> super, super into the game, even though technically it looked like they weren't having a good time. Mm -hmm. So Valve kept it in. Um, and they, they go through like all these little things about what they learned over play testing or controls um, or accessibility or even lore stuff. Like there were apparently story portions like environmental storytelling that I have completely missed three times through this game. And I, I listened to this dev commentary and they're like, yeah, well, we put this here. So if people looked at it, they would see this and it implies this part of this reality, which is totally fucked up. I'm like, wait. That's a th Oh shit, I walked right by this the first three times I played this game. <laughs> oh, okay. That adds a little bit more nuance to the world. Uh, like Makes it's you feel really, kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's really cool shit. And I really wish more games did it. I really wish more games did that. I love developer commentary. Hell, when I was a kid, my favorite part about getting like a new DVD was getting the making of bonus features. Like the making of Jurassic Park is honestly one of my favorite things. Uh, and now we've got that for Half-Life Alex. So if you've got Half-Life Alex, if you haven't touched it in a while, uh, go check out the dev commentary because it is fantastic. I need to watch more dev commentary stuff because game development is really interesting to me. No clip. And game design. Yeah. Oh, no yeah. I've seen. Um, I saw their one on The Witcher and I saw their one on Rocket League, of course. Definitely check that one out. Um, mm hmm. 
What else? What else did they do? They did Doom 2016, right? They did Hades. They did like four different, or was it four or five? They did a fucking bunch of episodes on Hades, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, let me see. They did, what are some of my favorites on there? I watch everything by Noclip. I don't know. It's all fucking good. Uh, their Fallout 76 one is actually pretty interesting. Um, they did say after they released that, though, that they, they changed their internal policies on what they would and wouldn't cover. Because it felt like an ad for a product that ended up being absolutely bonkers awful. Oh. So, but uh, hey, it was it was cool to get to see Bethesda say, no, we really think this will work for these reasons. Because <laughs> we put a 76 in front of a title that people buy. <laughs> All right, guys. But anyway, yeah. So Half-Life Alex dev commentary, 10 out of 10. I love it. Um, one humorous part that I learned about is apparently since everybody's working from home, not everybody has a, a full sound studio, uh, unlike Adam, uh, in their house. So <laughs> what they were doing is people were actually putting like microphones in goddamn blanket forts and they would lay on their floor, sticking their head in a bunch of blankets to muffle out sounds while they were recording. Um, and you can definitely hear some differing audio quality depending on which developer is speaking at the time, which uh, is kind of funny. I mean, I do. it's horrifyingly depressing because this is the reality we live in, but it's kind of funny. I'd be <laughs> lying if I told you I wasn't part of a situation where we took a closet, put a lot of blankets in it, and then recorded out of it. I, hey, it works. That's how, uh, yep. that's how Been they there, do done that. So the first voice lines for the announcer for Bastion were actually recorded that way. Uh, by the way, I think Noclip did that documentary too. So if you want to learn about Supergiant Games, Bastion, Transistor, Hades, uh, check out Noclip because they got the deets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of deets, do you have any other games that you got some deets on? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I played a little bit of Population 1. It's still great. Uh, my only issue is that people are getting better so we can't win as easily. <laughs> I got fourth twice, third twice, and first once. Uh, so I was playing with uh, Knight and Magic Dave and myself. We were wrecking shit. It was great. The shotguns feel excellent in that game. Um, I was waiting for somebody. I heard him because they shot Magic Dave. Dave dies. I'm just sitting in this house. I've got a shotgun. It's three stars. And I'm waiting. And they start running up to Dave to grab all of his shit. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, cool. Squad wiped. Now I can get Dave back up. It was wonderful. Save the day. He owes you his life. It's true. I've been playing a little bit more Proteus, and I have to say it is my favorite of the the new genre affectionately known as boomer shooters. (laughs) Boomer shooters. Um, Yeah, old school style Bronner shooters. 10 out of 10 game. I I really meant to play more of that game this week, and I didn't get around to it. I, like, don't get me wrong, having a big, like, rational area, like, the world in Half-Life Alex is great, but breaking a game into stupid little levels allows you to do really stupid shit, like, hey, we're gonna give you a bunch of chain gun ammo and set you up on a train, and you just gotta run through the place, murdering everything in your path. Everything Sweet. shall die. Or this this level called, uh, I think it was Memoriam, where literally, I... I believe it's the Kickstarter backers. Um, there's a bunch of names on a wall and it looks just like a, a war memorial of some kind. Uh, and it's a giant battle arena. So you have to run through and you know manage your ammo and kill anything that moves while jumping all over the place. And it just felt fucking sweet. So uh, if you're looking for an old school, fast paced, doomy, quakey game, but with modern design sensibilities, uh, Proteus is still goddamn excellent and a fantastic uh heavy metal electronic soundtrack oh it's so good the soundtrack is so fucking good dare i say it might rival doom 2016 for me if it keeps it up it's just great it's really good it's one of my favorites ever it doesn't have the 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 depth and nuance and stuff of the doom 2016 soundtrack like there's a lot going on with the doom, the doom 2016 soundtrack that's true like there's a lot going on but they absolutely captured the same kind of vibe um Which is sorry good. I, I had to i had to score that on our own net for a second um but yeah, no, they, they did a great job uh it's definitely heavily inspired by doom 2016 the the soundtrack anyway 
and they did a great job of capturing that vibe, but still, it, it doesn't feel like a ripoff. Yeah. It feels something entirely on its own. Which is good. That's what you want. If you're going to write a love letter to something, you don't want it to be that thing. You want it to be like an extension of that thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on what you're doing. Like Dusk absolutely took the uh, imitation as the <laughs> sincerest form of flattery thing to heart, where they remade Quake. Um, Proteus takes the, you know, let's let's make something that feels old, but plays very new. It's almost romanticizing it. Like, if this was made today, this is what we think it would be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. We're, so, and what's funny to me is that Doom 2016 kind of took this, how do we take Doom and make it into, you know, a big 2010s blockbuster AAA title? And Proteus said, how do we take a big blockbuster AAA title and build it if it were built in the 90s, but using today's accessibility standards? Um, so you get a really cool dichotomy. They're basically two sides of the same coin. Um, mm -hmm. So if you did like Doom 2016, you're going to like Proteus. Almost guaranteed. Yep. Which is cool. Yeah. But so that's that's all I've been playing. That's it. I think that's pretty much all we got for games. Yeah. Because we've been kind of like one-trick ponies recently with not playing a lot of unique stuff, which is fine. I mean, I've fallen in love with an old game. Um Adam's become an addict all over again. Tarkov is a hell of a drug. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, um, let's get to a uh, few little news items we got. Uh, first one, Tom's going to fucking love. IO Interactive has announced they are making a James Bond game. Boo. I'm just kidding. I'm so fucking excited. Holy shit. Do you guys like... IO Interactive. Like... Go ahead. Huh? IO Interactive are the developers behind the Hitman series of games, which I fucking adore. I love Hitman, uh, especially the new, the, the two new games. It's just so fucking good and mm -hmm. goofy as shit. Uh, and if they're making a James Bond game where you can run around and sneaky spy your way through and be goddamn smarmy about everything, <laughs> sign me up. Like yeah. the Hitman games are fucking hilarious just because it's so absurd. James Bond is a goofy fucking franchise, man. Like, <laughs> it's not dark and twisted. Like, it, it had... It was starring Sean Connery, man. You can't make anything dark with Sean Connery. There uh, were some moments with uh, Daniel Craig Bond that got a little dark. That's true. That's but more like, of a serious uh, take on James Bond, though, isn't it? Sort yeah, of uh, yeah. Sort of what the, the Dark Knight was to Batman. Yeah. Yes. I, but, I um, wait for like goofy as shit spouting one liners uh, like IO interactive hitman with James Bond. That's really laser awesome. watches and pin grenades. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. So, okay, so clearly I made Goldeneye references. Um, I want to give a little bit of news that's gaming related, not gaming related. So, uh, Goldeneye, famous movie, video game. One of the bigger iconic sets of that was an actual satellite that's suspended by cables over a concrete thing for uh, radio transmissions. Really fucking huge monster satellite. Look it up. GoldenEye satellite. You'll see what I'm talking about. You've seen it before. The satellite's officially being destroyed because they found that it's no longer safe to repair. So Aww. it's kind of sad. The, the suspension Dad. cables are actually starting to snap. It's oh, like a 300... <laughs> It's like a 300 ton satellite suspended by cables and the suspension cables are starting to snap. Jesus. Yeah, so they, they probably got to take that down <laughs> safely. And so I just wanted to call that out. It's like a really cool news item, kind of tangentially game related because that was a really fun um, mission, or level because you have like three rails come into a central area where you just pick fuckers off on and stuff. Yeah. Good old golden eye. So have you guys seen all the James Bond movies? Oh, hell yeah. no. Or oh, yeah? Them, or a good yeah. bit of them? I've seen all of them. Okay, so... I'm, I'm, I've I'm seen a couple of them. I don't know which ones I've seen, and it was when I was a kid. So let's just assume, starting from a blank slate, if you had to give somebody... All right, you have one, one Bond movie. This is all you get. Which one do you recommend? Man, 
I don't know the earlier ones as much, and the earlier ones felt kind of campy when I did watch some of them. They're definitely I'm, campy. Casino Royale. I love Casino Royale. It is, it is fantastic. If if you're okay with the camp from Russia with Love is just a goddamn classic. Yeah, it's gonna be campy, and uh, yeah, some of the content has not aged very well at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But uh, it's it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, I will say Pierce Brosnan, his Bond movies were enjoyable. Like, there's definitely some cheese. Like, we're talking uh, Nacho Bel Grande levels of cheese here. But, <laughs> but honestly, GoldenEye wasn't bad. Um, was it Die Another it's Day? What was it? Die Another Day was the last one, wasn't it? I think so. It was the one he did after Goldeneye, I want to say. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. Uh, I love Pierce Brosnan. Uh, he, he so Pierce Brosnan is the, like, if you were to draw a picture of what James Bond would look like, it was him. Yeah, that's it. He's not <laughs> but, even acting, just being himself. I don't think he did a good Bond. Like, as an actor, I don't think he did that great. I think Daniel Craig was the best Bond per acting. But Pierce Brosnan, he just looked it, man. He looks fucking 007. I feel like he he pulls off the I'm a rich playboy way better than Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig pulls off the I'm a highly lethal mercenary spy guy extremely yeah. well, like better than anyone else. And Sean Connery pulls off the yeah, we're going to have sex tonight better than anyone else. <laughs> Ex mother. <laughs> while being incredibly fucking campy yeah like cliche is all fuck just yeah but either way game coming uh gonna be excited i do not anticipate this being like any of the old gold or james bond games no, no this, this is gonna, gonna be, be something completely different, completely different hopefully Although there's I no it, um in hitman the gunplay does feel decent enough uh, especially for a stealth game you don't get to use it at all because you're not really supposed to it's a stealth game because you're throwing um suitcases at people and stuff yeah but i i gotta say i'm looking forward to their gunplay because you know it's a james bond game you're gonna be running and gunning at some point mm -hmm. yes i'm just saying it's not gonna be golden eye level type oh, play no, no. but okay, that said really they bring back the golden eye mechanic of the only thing different between the difficulty levels is just the amount of objectives you have to complete. Like, yeah, you go in cool. on, like, amateur, like, uh, what was it? I forget. Like, the difficulty is, like, range, and I think the last one is, like, 007 mode. But in one, it's just like, hey, leave the level. Okay, cool. I'm going to shoot my way through. <laughs> and the other one is like, okay, well, leave the level, but you also have to disable this computer thing and upload, like, this data. And then the third one is, okay, you got to hack the mainframe. Then you got to do this thing. Then you got to rescue these people. You got to kill this commander who you usually avoid. You got to go down to this basement and disable these alarms. And then you can leave the level. You're like, oh, shit. You I, I love that yeah, cool. form of difficulty increase. Like, it's, yeah. so, it's, it's so easy and I think kind of lame when games are just like, all right, all the enemies take more bullets to kill. Exactly. Or, all right, you now die in less shots or whatever. I love when they well, take the, well, a, a different approach to the difficulty. Well, and you get, like, you'll realize that, oh, I played through just doing the easiest shit. There was entire portions of this level I never even saw. Yeah. Yeah, like, especially the dam level. Like, the entire basement section, you will never see unless you're doing those optional objectives or the, the higher level objectives. Mm -hmm. Same with the snow level. You'll never go into yeah. those satellite areas without having, unless you're on a higher difficulty. Yeah. So yeah, it's I'm I'm excited. We'll see. That said, there's no details, absolutely no details about this game yet, except for they're making it. So yep, we'll see. Um, speaking of a game that we think they're making, we don't know for sure, except for what they're doing next weekend or something soon. Star Citizen is having a Starship Expo. That's right, they're having a fucking expo over the hundred plus starships they've made so far. It's the first time that anyone will see what $300 million worth of development will get you in a game that you can't actually play. <laughs> so they're doing, they're embracing, I read a little bit of the article. They're embracing 
the concept of manufacturers in a game, similar to that uh, Borderlands, how you have different manufacturers of guns that have different characteristics. They're doing that with their starships. And on this expo, they're hiring someone to do like a top gear host kind of thing to run the expo for certain manufacturers at a time. And they're going to stream it. Like they're treating it like a legit fucking expo. Imagine if they were to take all of this time, effort, and, money <laughs> and put it into building the fucking game. <laughs> what a novel concept. All right, for, for everyone watching, listening, it's it's probably picked up on the subtext here because it's definitely subtle. I fucking hate Star Citizen. It is such I a mean, game. how can you hate it? It doesn't exist. It's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is Honestly, like, like oh hey like you pay 500 bucks we're gonna get you a ship in this game that we t that will totally exist one day we promise it is literally the most expensive game ever ever produced and it hasn't even been produced like they have <laughs> so much fucking money on this people are lining up like i literally know somebody who has like a thousand bucks tied up in like pre-ordered bullshit for star citizen i'm like do you it, it's Once. not gonna happen. It's not gonna come out. Like oh, you, you pre-ordered this thing, and you can walk around your virtual ship. Congrats, you fucking Latians. Yeah, that's pretty much all you <laughs> get right now. You can walk around a ship, and every once in a while, you can get into a cockpit. So supposedly you you're supposed to be. Able do, you can't even do that anymore. Apparently, the game is so broken in its present day state that you will just fall through the floor. Like you spawn oh in, you walk outside the door, and you fall through. If you can make it to the elevator, sometimes that disappears and you just fall into the void. That, so you, that, you can that, play that, a little, like walk that, around. That's been fixed. Um, and this is actually going to get the players, like there's actually, players are going to be able to go into this area and actually get into the ships, all of the ships, and Believe actually see what I all the ships are on it. the inside. Believe it when I fucking see it. Well, I mean, they'll be live streaming it. They'll be able to see. Yeah. <laughs> no, any I, day now. <laughs> yeah, any day now. But no, um, Star Citizen, um, I don't think anyone in a good conscience can ever tell you to look into it. No. But no. as an experiment of seeing how weird shit can get in the game dev world, check it out sometime. Yeah. Now, if um, you're looking for a space game to play, uh, I wouldn't turn to Star Citizen. Instead... Fire up that Epic Games launcher and pick yourself up Elite Dangerous, which is now free on the Epic Games Store. Yeah. Uh, so Elite Dangerous is fantastic, especially if you've got a VR headset. Literal 12 out of 10 game. If you've got a VR headset and like a flight stick and throttle, 20 out of 10. It is one of the best experiences I have ever had in VR. It is a space simulator this isn't like a no man's sky kind of arcadey run around and vibe out to the glories of the universe this is like hardcore space sim if you don't want to travel for 10 minutes while looking at nothing probably not the game for you <laughs> it's it's really good it's super complex if you want to get into it know someone who's already into it that is the best way to learn the game is have yeah. someone who can walk you through the process Go on, so they do have a they do have a monster tutorial system like you could probably put 10 hours in the game and not finish all the tutorials. So yeah. I will say this. Um, if you are playing multiplayer, I would suggest if you're able, like if you're within communications range, because that's the thing in the game, um, use the in-game comms, uh, especially if you're bounty hunting or doing anything where you're taking damage. Uh, because as your ship degrades or if communications gets hit like with weaponry, it will actually degrade the audio that you hear from your wingmates, which is really fucking that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Elite Dangerous is incredible. It's got like a bunch of different systems that all interact with each other. It's really, really well made. Um, I, I, I could go on and on about this game forever, but I'll just leave that there. In-game comms are fantastic. More yeah. places, more games need to use them. I yeah. fully agree. Well, fellas, I think that's a wrap on another one. Yeah, that's another one. That's a, another one. Another um, one. Another one. Any of you guys got anything you want to get on the way out? Um, oh, so for the game of the year list, Doom Eternal doesn't belong there. It's just not that good. Um, and Half-Life Alex is not on the list. I'm kind of bummed, but not everyone has a VR headset, so I get why it's not on. It's not really an accessible game right now. Uh, but yeah. if you do have a VR headset, 
I can highly recommend picking that up because it's the best VR game I've ever played. I've only played one of the games on the list. I have another one that I got to get installed and try. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remakes on there. Um, contrary to some people will say about remakes being on Game of the Year list, this is not a remake in the sense of it just being remastered. This is a completely different game. It is 20, 30 hours of gameplay for a section of the game that used to be only 15 hours. It's an expansion onto the story. You get so much more detail. You get so much more connected to the characters. Mm-hmm. Excellent game to get out there and try. God, that was this year. I just realized this year's been yeah. so fucking long. I forgot that was this year. <laughs> so Holy shit. Happened this year. That was this year. <laughs> Fuck. What else happened this year? I oh, got this uh, cool ramen noodle hoodie. Yes. Oh, God. So if you would like to follow us over on our YouTube, we have YouTube 72 Pin Connector. We put up our podcast, podcast clips, plays of the month. Some other random shit. And here soon, we might have a cooking channel. Who the fuck knows? We do random ass shit sometimes. Um, If you're over on our YouTube watching us, thank you very much. But we are live every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. I said the backwards. 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come over to our Twitch, 72 Pin Connector. And just, you know, hang out in the chat. Talk to us. Play the games with us. It's a good fucking time, I promise. If you would like to keep up to date on what's going on, Rocket League, related 72 pc related all sorts of shit go to our twitter 72 pc underscore official and you'll catch all sorts of random ass tweets and then finally we have a website 72 connector.com go there check it out all the links are there for all the different places there was one more call out i missed gentlemen today was day one of rlcs winter split one it's out the gate first matchup ghost gaming we lost the series 3-0 we looked Really good the first two games. Super strong. We lost 1-0 and then 2-1 in OT. Last game looks it was a little rough, but we looked super good. Game one, game two. We end up playing Space Station Gaming round one tomorrow in what is the elimination round. Lose one, you're gone. So we'll be tweeting out what time and where you can watch the stream. Show up, support the boys. They love seeing the support from the crowd. Just get out there. It's really nice to have the community behind them. So we love you guys for doing it. Yes. That said, I think that's all we got for this week. I think so, that's everything. Yeah. Until next week. Game on, y'all. See you, everybody. <laughs>